So welcome back to our discussion on time dependent perturbation theory. So today we'll discuss uh, the interaction of atoms with radiation. So remember this is one of the main application of uh, time dependent perturbation theory. Now before going to the discussion of uh, the interaction of atom with field, so first we have to set up uh, the Hamiltonian of atom. Now if you look at an atom, the atom itself is a very complex system. It contains uh, central nucleus and surrounding uh, electrons. Okay, so setting up uh, the Hamiltonian of atom itself is a very tedious task. So for simplicity, what we'll consider is uh, we'll assume an atom uh, which will, with uh, having only single electron and very massive nucleus. Okay, so so consider an atom with single electron. and massive nucleus. Okay, so if that is the case, then the Hamiltonian can be written as P square by 2Me plus V0 for. Okay, so the, uh, the kinetic energy component is uh, attributed to uh, the electron and the nucleus is massive, it is uh, not moving uh, anything. And uh, there is a potential V0 of R, it's a Coulombic potential, it's a potential between, uh, it is due to uh, the electrostatic um, attraction between the nucleus and electron. Okay, so this is just Coulombic potential between the electron and nucleus. Okay, so, so far so good. Now here, if you introduce the field, Okay, now uh, the field or radiation is characterized by two potential. So which are they? So the radiation is characterized by two potentials. One is a scalar potential phi and the another one is a vector potential A. Okay, so if the radiation is introduced to an atom, what change will occur in this Hamiltonian? The first change is the momentum would change. Momentum is no longer P. The momentum would become P plus Ea by C because the field also carries some momentum. Okay, now apart from this change, we have to introduce uh, uh, the scalar potential term into our Hamiltonian. So these are the two changes uh, we have to make. So if uh, the field is present or if the field is interacting with atom. Then the new Hamiltonian would be H, which would be one by two Me. P plus E A by C the whole square plus E phi plus V zero of R. Okay, now we can uh, simplify this expression. So better we'll go to the next page to simplify this. Okay, now first we can expand uh, this bracket. So if you expand it, we'll get a P square term, then uh, E square, A square by C square term, plus uh, there will be two terms, P dot A plus uh, A dot B, there will be two terms, then plus E phi plus V zero for, okay, let it be. Now we can uh, look at this P dot A and A dot B. Now, uh, in order to get uh, some idea about P dot A, so consider this P dot A acting on some uh, state psi. Okay, so what is the form of P? In three dimension, the P I can write minus I H cross del dot A psi. Now we have to apply a product rule here. If you apply the product rule, what will you get minus I H cross del dot A multiply with psi. 
plus uh, a dot minus ih cross del acting on psi. Now what is minus ih cross del? Minus ih cross del is nothing but p. So this can be written as minus ih cross del dot a plus a dot p acting on psi okay now uh, with this identity of what i can write is this p dot a can be written as minus ih cross del dot a plus a dot p okay so it's a very nice identity now i can uh, substitute this expression to our original hamiltonian now in the original hamiltonian if you look at this expression this e square by c square term would be very small okay so i can uh, neglect uh, this term and hence my hamiltonian the hamiltonian modified hamiltonian can be as one by 2me times p square plus instead of uh, p dot a i can write minus ih cross del dot a plus a dot p and there is already an a dot p here so there will be two times a dot p plus a phi plus v zero far okay so so far so good so there is no confusion here okay now here um, what i am going to do is i am going to induce a gauge so uh, in, in in the case of uh, the electromagnetic field we have always have a freedom to choose our gauge and that is called the gauge freedom okay so the the gauge uh, i am going to use is the coulomb gauge and in coulomb gauge uh, we can set uh, del dot a is zero okay and apart from uh, this coulomb gauge uh, what i am also assuming is uh, uh, there is no other source okay so if there is no source available then rho would be zero then uh, in coulomb gauge the equation satisfied by the scalar potential is uh, del square phi equal to uh, minus rho by epsilon zero it's called uh, the the Poisson's equation now in the source free region what would happen is the del square phi becomes zero and uh, we can set the phi itself is zero okay so uh, what i what i am doing is i am um, introducing two restriction the first thing is uh, i am going to introduce a coulomb gauge as well as i am assuming there is no other source there is no other charge distribution uh, in this case so we can set phi zero and uh, del dot a zero and therefore my hamiltonian the new hamiltonian when the uh, the field interacting with the atom i can write which is one by two m e or sorry p square by 2 me so i just plus v0 of r plus i think uh, uh, we have forgot to write something in this expression better we can go back to the previous page and find out okay now uh, while we are uh, doing this i think the e e by c was missing here okay so there should be an e by c here and an e by c here so therefore what would come is uh, there should be an e by c there should be an e by c okay so since that term is missing I will just consider here there will be 
a by c and uh, this is not important because del dot a becomes zero okay so what would be our term then so the next term would be uh, a by m a c a dot p okay now p square by 2m e plus v0 of r was our original hamiltonian which is the hamiltonian of the atom okay so that can be denoted as h0 so therefore the total hamilton in h is given by h0 plus e by mec times a dot p okay so this is a very important hamiltonian for us so this is a Hamiltonian for the atom field interaction. Okay, now the best thing about this, uh, the Hamiltonian is uh, uh, the H0 is the, the Hamiltonian of the atom which can be completely solved. Now uh, the additional terms which comes over here due to the interaction of interaction with the field is uh, the second term. Now the second term is acting as a perturbation. Okay, so the second term can act as a perturbation. Okay, so obviously the uh, the a is a vector potential that would be a time dependent uh, term and hence uh, i have to use at the time dependent perturbation theory in order to uh, study this kind of hamiltonian so we can use so we'll have two different approaches we'll set up the hamiltonian by treating the field as a classical field so there's a one approach okay so such approach is called uh, the semi classical um, quantum theory or semi classical theory and uh, the other approach is uh, we can consider the field also quantized okay so in two different approaches so we'll get entirely two different results okay so in the next class what i will do is i will uh, assume the field is a classical uh, thing and i will set up uh, the total hamiltonian of the atom field interaction and will identify the perturbation term and as well as we can find the transition rate and thereafter uh, we'll discuss about the quantum theory of radiation okay so um, uh, we can uh, stop it here so just go through this derivation and plus also just revise um, the topic of how we can uh, uh, classically uh, define uh, the field